Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my new series, Finding the Perfect Carry Gun, where I feature a new gun every week. I shoot it, I carry it, and I give you my thoughts. And episode two this week, we're gonna be talking about the car PM9. First off, thank you so much if you watched episode one. We loved reading all your comments. Mac responded to a bunch of them last night. So it's been cool to hear what you guys want to see from us. So if there's a gun you'd like us to feature during the series, comment down below, let us know, and we'll try to get our hands on one so that I can test it out. But today we shot the car PM9 at the range. So in this series, I'm going to be going to the range every week and shooting the same course of fire with every gun. So I do a 50 round warm up and then two 50 round courses of fire. I do it twice. So it's 150 rounds total that I'm firing out of each gun. And so last week I started with my normal carry gun, which is the Glock 42. This is what I've been carrying lately, my everyday carry gun. And so today I shot the car PM9, and we'll talk about size and everything like that. But you'll see how my experience was at the range. I normally carry the Glock 42, which is a 380, and this is a 9mm. I used to carry, my first carry gun ever was a Ruger LC9S, which was a similarly sized 9mm. Then I carried a 9mm shield for a while, which I still carry on occasion. Um, but lately I've just been carrying the Glock 42. So I like a 9mm. I enjoy shooting them for the most part. Um, I can't say that I, I enjoyed shooting the car PM9. So before I get into that, let's just compare sizes here. So my normal carry gun, the Glock 42, is going to be in the front here. And then the car PM9 is next to it. So I'm going to put the specs right here so you can see them both side by side, what the measurements are and the weights and everything, but they're very similar. The car has a shorter slide, similar grips, um, similar height. With seven rounds in each, they're almost the exact same weight, so very similar as far as concealment goes. If I were to choose one based on how it conceals, it would be hard to choose one over the other because they're very similarly sized. However, with the car, what you get for it being easy to conceal, it kind of makes up for it in the way that it shoots. So you'll see when I go to shoot it, I have a lot of discomfort shooting this gun. It, it hurts my hands. I broke a bunch of nails throughout the process. Normally I have a nail file in my range bag, but I must have taken it out to use it in the house and then I never replaced it. So that was kind of a problem for me. Um, but it's just not a comfortable gun for me to shoot. I noticed a few things when I was shooting it. First of all, when I had the flush magazine inside the gun, after my first shot, my pinky would slide because of the recoil, and then it would just stay underneath. And I don't normally shoot like this. I normally shoot like this. When I shoot the Glock, my pinky stays there. But when I was shooting the car, my pinky went under, and it stayed there. Uh, when I was using the extended magazine, I had a different problem. My finger kept getting pinched in between where the extended magazine meets the bottom of the magazine well, and that was pretty uncomfortable. I noticed when I made an effort to grip it tighter though, that didn't happen quite as much. Um, but that was uncomfortable. And I just felt like my hand was getting beat up by this gun. I'm not being biased, you guys know I love the Glock 42, but throughout this series, I'm being very open-minded about all of the guns I try, because there might be something better out there than what I'm carrying. But I want to try these out in case these are things that you guys want to try so you know what my experience is. It's going to be different for everybody based on the size of your hands and your strength and your overall size, what you like, um, and the way that you can manipulate the gun. I couldn't reach the slide stop on this to lock the slide to the rear. So if I remove the magazine to lock the slide to the rear on the Glock 42, I can do that. On the PM9, I can't quite reach it. My thumb is not long enough. So when we talk about finding a gun that's right for you, you have to make sure that you can actually manipulate all the controls on the gun. And for me, this one is just a tad too far forward and my thumb is just a little too short. I have tiny hands. So that's something that you need to be aware of when you're going to find a carry gun. So Mac and I were talking this morning about what makes a good carry gun, and these are things we've talked about before. But basically, we're looking for something that is fun to shoot because if you hate shooting it, you're not gonna wanna train with it. And after like 50 rounds, if you fire a gun and you're like, oh, I really hate this, 
you're not going to want to keep shooting and training with it. So I just want to put a PSA out there for all of you well-meaning gentlemen who buy a gun for your lady friend or wife or sister or whatever. If she doesn't enjoy shooting it, she's not going to want to train with it. And training is extremely important if you're going to be counting on a gun to save your life. So have her try a bunch and make sure that she enjoys shooting it. Because even if it's easy to conceal, if she hates shooting it, she's not going to be able to train with it and learn how to use it properly. So it has to be enjoyable to shoot or at least not painful. I have to be accurate with it. I, I want to be able to hit what I'm aiming at. And at the end of the live fire portion of this video, you'll see my targets and how I scored with the car. It just wasn't a fun gun for me to shoot. It was painful. I hurt my wrist at one point. And I'm not being dramatic. This was my actual experience. I ended up shooting the qual twice, went through the whole thing. I didn't stop even though it was uncomfortable. But if this is something that I bought thinking it would be a good carry gun and then I went and took a class with it, I would probably end up selling it or trading it in for something else after that because I don't enjoy shooting it. Throughout the series, my goal is to shoot the firearm for that week and then carry it throughout the rest of the week. After my experience at the range, I don't feel comfortable carrying this because if I need to use it, God forbid, um, I don't feel confident in this firearm. But I will show you different ways to conceal it because even though it's almost the exact same size as the Glock 42, if you have this gun, you might want to see how I conceal this exact gun. So I'm going to do that for you guys. You'll also see that the magazines, I took a clip here that I wanted to show you guys. Loading the magazines for the CAR PM9 was kind of painful. Mac was loading them at first and he told me that he kept, it was like cutting into his finger. Like the lip of the magazine is very sharp. So you'll see here that I, I started to use my Maglula Up Lula magazine loader, which is extremely helpful. So if you have magazines you don't enjoy loading or you just want to use it because they're so much easier, definitely get yourself one of those. I'll link those below. But I ended up using those for a lot of the loading for the magazines. Um, they're just kind of painful and they pinch a little bit. Let's get into the live fire now. You guys can see how I did at the range. I'm not going to be explaining the exact course of fire, but I'll put that all in the description so you can read wh what I did from what distance. I explained it all in episode one, so if you haven't seen that, go back and watch episode one of this series. But here we go, let's go to the range. Okay guys, I'm gonna do my warm up with the car PM9, 50 rounds. Sure, my pinky. <laughs> First thoughts? Uh, it's a little jumpy, and the extended magazine is hurting my pinky for some reason. <laughs> go slow. Did you see that? No, I missed it. Sorry. Did it do it again? It went. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it doesn't like to load the top the first round. Yeah, my pinky hurts. Oh, 
Okay guys, I'm here at the range with the car PM9 and I'm gonna start my first qual. I'm not gonna say exactly what I'm doing every time like I did in the first episode, but I'll list it in the description so you know the exact course of fire that I'm doing. So I'm gonna run it once and then run it again. It went that time. That was five, right? The slide didn't walk back. It feels like the trigger takes forever to reset. Ready? Round two, fight! It's not moving at all. Something might have broken inside this gun. What? Something in the gun broke, okay? I was shooting the gun, I'm almost at the end of my second course of fire, like completing it, and something happens in the gun. So now we're home and I'm gonna show you, Mac took the car PM9 apart and he's gonna show us what the problem is and it was a really easy fix, thankfully. But whoever put the gun back together last put the spring in backwards. So you guys are gonna see that here. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think the problem is. I think this spring right here jumped over the back here and that, that might be what was causing the problem. Oh, so I, I see. See how the yeah. spring goes mm -hmm. over the edge? Like it's, you can see it's, yeah. it's, a, it's tight here, mm -hmm. but loose here. You can get, you, you can get on it. Yeah, and it went so, over it. So I have to pull that out and probably re-put it on and then, okay. And then who knows? Probably the huh? Oh, I'm done! Yay! <laughs> Are you happy you're done? Yes. How come? I, it just it's it's painful for my hands. I just I hurt my wrist. I broke my nail. I don't. It's not fun to shoot. But I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how I scored.
Okay, my lovely husband just scored my targets again. My first run with the PM9, I got a 64, so it's two points per miss. And then my second run, I got a 70. There's my two targets. Okay guys, I'm just gonna show you a couple holsters that would work with the car PM9 because this gun is basically like carrying the Glock 42. So if you've seen any of my concealed carry videos in the last like year or two, there's a ton of different options for carrying that gun. So, And the first video I did in this series, episode one, I showed different ways to carry the Glock 42. Since I scored less than an 80 on my course of fire with this gun, I I'm not gonna carry it this week because it's just not safe for me. So I'm just gonna show you a couple holster options so you can get kind of an idea if this is something that you're interested in. So option one is the sticky holster. This is the same size I use for my Glock 42, so I know the car PM9 fits in there perfectly. It goes right inside the waistband of your pants. The bottom of it holds against my hip bone, and that just gives it a nice grip in there. I just cover it with my clothing. Pretty good concealment, very comfortable. I've been carrying in the sticky holster a lot, but that's one option for the car and it doesn't come out when you draw your gun. Love sticky holsters, I have a discount code for these that I'll link below. We could also use another favorite of mine, which is my Dean Adams corset holster. They do make these for men. I know mine's a little girly, but if you're a man who wants to try something like this, Dean Adams does make a uh, men's version. All right, so I've got that on. You could wear it inside your pants and that way when you like reach up, it's not gonna show, but I'm just gonna wear it outside just to show you guys. I like to wear it a little off center. And then my gun goes in this pocket. It does have trigger protection in there. So I'm gonna put the car carefully between my fingers. And it tucks in there really nice. Great concealment, it's comfortable, it's easy. It's a quick draw. Another option. You could also just do a simple inside the waistband. This is by Ultimate Holsters. It has a flat antimicrobial panel on the back, so it lies flat against your body. And this is designed to be worn without a belt. So gun goes in, goes into your waistband, and the rectangular part of the clip sticks out. Hold on, I got him. Okay. I'll show you how to use these in a few different videos. And this one has a concealment wing, so it conceals even better. So now that clip is outside, I push down on the top of the clip and then it grabs onto my pants so I don't have to wear a belt. Nice appendix carry option. There's a bit of a bulge there so make sure you have like a flowy top or a sweater or something. And that's option number three. So hopefully that just gave you guys some ideas. There's so many different ways to carry. A million different types of holsters, but hopefully if you look around my channel, you'll see something that works for you. I hope you guys enjoyed episode two of Finding the Perfect Carry Gun. If you have a car, PM9, I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you think of it. If you enjoy shooting it, what your experience is, because just for me, my hands, it doesn't fit me right, and it was kind of painful for me to shoot. I did not enjoy it at all. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Leave me a comment below and please don't forget to subscribe because it really helps out my channel. And I'll see you in episode three. Stay safe. Bye. Okay guys, I just wanted to give you a little update on the Glock 42 because in episode one, you might have seen I had some malfunctions when I was shooting with my left hand. So when Mac and I went to the range to film episode two, we brought the Glock 42 and all of my magazines and I shot all six of them lefty and I had no problems. So... I just wanted to make sure it wasn't my gun, it wasn't me, um, it might have been whatever magazine I used that day or just the fact that we were changing out what ammo we were using, so we wanted to test it out and make sure that that gun was still safe for me to carry and we've actually shot it again, lefty since then, so just wanted to give you guys an update in case you were wondering what happened with that and that's it, I'll see you guys in episode 3.